happened in Ottawa on February of 2022 has changed the world. Yeah, right. It was beautiful. It was typically Canadian. It started a worldwide movement. And look exactly. at Europe. Look at Europe right now. They're spewing shit on buildings and stuff. We didn't have nothing in that. We played hockey. The whole pandemic and like that, they're, they're questioning it a lot more now. Just with uh, everything coming out, it's, it's start, start, things are start, starting to slowly come out. We are here out of love for our families, our communities, and our nation. These past two years, the COVID mandates have divided us. This protest began because of the federal government's restrictions on trucker freedoms. We are therefore calling on all levels of government in Canada to end all COVID mandates and restrictions. We will continue our protest until we see a clear plan for their elimination. So far, no one from the federal, provincial or municipal government has spoken directly with us. Instead, they are using you, the media, to portray us as racists, misogynists and even terrorists. The federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act to supplement provincial and territorial capacity to address the blockades and occupations. No matter what you do, we will hold the line. It's been two years since the Freedom Convoy was forcefully put down by the government and law enforcement here in Ottawa, Ontario. Robert Krejcik reporting for Rebel News at this second year anniversary demonstration commemorating the Freedom Convoy of two years ago. For those that need a reminder, the Freedom Convoy was a massive peaceful protest, a civilly disobedient demonstration against what I refer to as the COVID-19 enterprise. You all remember it. Government issued decrees, edicts, mandates, lockdowns all ostensibly serving the interest of public health. Now, more recently, last month in January, a federal justice ruled that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's invocation of the Emergencies Act as a tool to deal with and put down the Freedom Convoy was unconstitutional. You know, I think at the end of the day, it was something like 280 accounts frozen. One detail there is that the Emergencies Act invocation allowed the government to freeze bank accounts allegedly associated with Freedom Convoy demonstrators. And remember, the federal government repeatedly described the Freedom Convoy as an unlawful protest. So people's bank accounts were frozen without due process. This prevented some people from purchasing their essential needs. Now, we're going to speak with a bunch of demonstrators here today get their remarks, get their thoughts, get their reflections and contemplations, and share that with you all out there in the Dear Rebel News audience. Remember, we cannot do this sort of journalism for free. We need your financial support, so please help us out. Go to rebelfieldreports.com and contribute what you can. Two years ago, it was a much sadder scene here, wasn't it? The sun was not shining, but the wind was sure blowing, and we had pepper spray in our eyes, and we were being hit by rubber bullets. But there was a spirit inside of us that would not disappear, that would not fade. It's still holding inside of us. And so seeing you all here today, I just want to say happy anniversary! <laughs> I'm here with some fellow patriots. So why don't you folks tell me why you came out here today to demonstrate? Well, we were here back in 2022 for the convoy and uh, we're back out here again to support, to fight for freedom and stand up for our rights. Same here, we just need to get some new buttons and show our support. I'm here to support the convoy, you know, support our freedoms, right? To make, it, uh, make sure that, you know, everyone's aware or try to spread that word there, you know? I'm here because I was here two years ago when they invoked the Emergencies Act illegally on us. They started beating us up. We're holding the line down here in front of the West when they first came at us. I was parked over on Lyon Street and yeah, it was illegal. We were here because we don't want the kids to get vaccinated. That's what they did. 
they uh, they throw some people out because they didn't want to get the vaccine. They didn't want to get the shot, so they, they lost their job. But then now they're getting together to fight back to the military and get money back. I was here for the entire trucker convoy Same. In, all, in all of February, every day, in a thong. You remember days of minus 35? I remember. I'm here today to remember what we as Canadians did two years ago. And the fact that we're back here standing on that hill today means the fight's not over. That's right. It's not over. And you know, it's kind of just beginning. There's a lot of people out there that are just starting to awaken. They're just starting to open their eyes and we can't stop shedding the light here. We need, we need, we need real help in this country. Many of us weren't allowed to participate in much of society because we didn't want to be injected with a thing. Um, you know, many of us couldn't wear masks. We're, you know, being assaulted and accosted, just out shopping, trying to buy a tomato for dinner. Um, and then coming here and it was just absolute acceptance. It was a connection that we hadn't had. Um, and I thought I knew what, a, what, a, what truckers were as a, a general statement. But man, it changed my mind, it opened my heart, and I'm so thankful for this experience and the beauty of all of this, and, and anybody can deny this all they want, but what happened in Ottawa on February of 2022 has changed the world. It, it woke the masses up and it created a global movement. Why don't you share with us what were your best memories of that time? Uh, just the unity between everybody. Uh, I've never seen in my lifetime anyways in Canada people from coast to coast, from province to province, just united, just fighting for the same cause and just making sure that we have everything that we need. All my family and friends were coming at me thinking we were being bad up here and destructive of property. I felt I had to stay and start doing live videos to show people this is what it is. Like everybody's high-fiving each other, giving each other hugs, feeding the homeless. They said we stole food from the homeless. The foodless, we had so much food that we were giving away that the homeless shelters in the area were turning away the food from us because they had too much. The way that convoy wiped fear from my children's mind uh, is something I'll never forget. They got to come down here and see that there's really nothing to be afraid of and it opened their eyes and you know, I'm raising warriors. Yeah, right. It was beautiful, it was typically Canadian. It started a worldwide movement and look at Europe, look at Europe right now. There's spewing shit on buildings and stuff. We didn't have nothing in that, we played hockey. <laughs> Amanda, over the past, let's say two years, three years, would you say that more people that you know in your life, your peers, family, friends, yeah. are coming over to this point of view or raising their awareness of what matters in terms of politics? I definitely think that way. And I definitely think it's a, a, slow, um, a slow train to turn, but we're turning it. We're turning it, you know, and the, the, the double vaxxed, they don't want to get any more. I know some people, they don't believe in us, and now everything, it's changed. So, so wait, wait, I want to make sure I understand you. Would you say that more people that you speak to about these sorts of issues are coming around to see things clearly than, let's say, a few years ago? Oh, yes, yes. They realize some, they make a mistake, but I am... I'm not gonna judge those people because who, who I am, I'm here for freedoms and that's why I'm stay here for the new generation. Uh, a lot of people are more open to the uh, new information come out, right? People are more, more aware of, uh, of this whole, uh, you know, the whole pandemic or like that, they're, they're questioning a lot more now, just with uh, everything coming out. It's, it's start, start, things are start, starting to slowly come out. Now they don't want to have conversations with people. People are a little bit more open-minded, willing to, you know, willing to, you know, listen this time, you know, versus before where they just shut you out, right? I, th I mean, I have many, many friends who just, they don't agree with certain um, way of thinking or, you know, and they pretty much, live off of just following what the news tells you and, and whatnot and people like you and I it's just we're 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 mocked we're laughed at and uh, we don't know what we're talking about apparently but even these people they haven't shifted at all not the not the ones that I uh, are friends with unfortunately but you know they have their opinion I have mine and that's how it is I started speaking out in 2020 at Queen's Park 
And at that time, uh, you know, people driving by weren't exactly being supportive. And it was a lot of negative response. Um, and, you know, from friends and family as well. Like, it was, people didn't want us out there doing that. And now, you know, even today, I walked around a little bit. And, you know, some people were watching and shaking their head, but a lot of people were giving a thumbs up. Yes. Uh, I've talked to a lot of police officers uh, who are on our side, and I actually agree with um, that they don't like where things are heading as well. I think the whole sentiment has changed. Um, I, and, I, you know, we I believe that we're the majority now. What is it about the Tamara Leach trial, the Chris Barber trial, that's important that Canadians should understand? Well, for me, it's a travesty of justice. I mean, she's uh, they're political prisoners in a so <laughs> what do you call a so-called free country. I believe we are a free country, Robert, and uh, so that's why I'm following it still. The fact that it's still ongoing, this uh, I'm here they're going back, I think, in March. I think so too, yeah. And uh, it's just, it's a, it breaks my heart for, their, uh, for the nation, their families. During the March portion of this demonstration, there was a small group, a handful of counter demonstrators, most of them signaling through their clothing and their signage that they were sympathetic to the Palestinian national cause. Remember, we cannot do this sort of journalism for free. We need your financial support. So please help us out. Go to rebelfieldreports.com and contribute what you can.